Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast, the only podcast where the world ones you'll get are the AI-generated uh, descriptions of our episode and the upcoming hurricane. So every time I have it generate something based on the script, it like starts off with, in this episode of the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast, Join a whirlwind of laughters and blah, like it. Whirlwind yeah. is the AI's go to word. Yeah. So, and we never not say that. Not exciting, not stupendous, but it whirlwind. Likes to use, it likes to use whirlwind and roller coaster. Roller coaster is definitely a much more accurate term. But that's it's the like roller coaster back of and forth, shit back and forth, show back and forth. here. Yeah. So, Debbie. Does Dallas. What? Actually is doing Tallahassee. Okay. That's uh, vintage. Yeah, you're, she's staring the at The only Debbie I know is the Debbie Downer. Well, there you go. Yeah. If you lose electricity because of Debbie, Debbie's probably going to be a downer. But uh, Debbie Does Dallas is like probably one of the most referenced. And actually, I don't even what know is if it it's from? real. It's a porn. <gasps> Yeah. It's like, I feel like it, I feel Debbie like it was in Deadpool. Debbie does Dallas, as in yeah. does all the dudes in Dallas. Yeah. yeah. I thought you were okay. just pretending to not know what I was. It's, I, I can't even tell you. Okay, actually, no. I wonder if Google, No, don't search it. I don't want to see. On, hold on, I'm not. How many times has Debbie does Dallas been referenced? In no, Debbie Downer is the oh. only Debbie. There are no other Debbies. Did you know you have hair all over your forehead? Literally all I over your forehead. I just got back from getting my hair cut. You didn't let me do anything, so. I didn't first, let him the, do anything. The do you first hear? Because I was trying to get work done. You're like, all right, let's go. And walked in the studio, so. um, Okay, so the first you thing that comes up. Interesting. Uh, the first thing that comes up from Reddit. Verbatim what I what I stated. How many times has Debbie done Dallas? Debbie does Dallas been referenced in pop culture? Reddit thread comes up from seven years ago. Okay, and says, "Why is Debbie does Dallas a culturally significant film?" <laughs> and it's in the subreddit r slash movies. I only know of this movie because of references to it through film and television. <laughs> okay, but why is this particular porno, or why did this particular porno strike a chord? Uh, that made mainstream culture, mainstream and culture, this person can't type. Um, there are countless adult films floating out there in the ether, but why is this porno made several decades ago still sticking out today? Also, mods, I apologize if this is the wrong sub, uh, but I thought the, this community would have a lot of good answers and discussion. Okay, so what's the answer? Alliteration. And then the response to alliteration was ain't alliteration. There's only four comments on this post, and that's one and two. <laughs> According to Wikipedia, uh, the film is in the public domain Y'all following uh, U.S. court ruling in 1987 that declared uh, its copyright being lost. So uh, I guess somebody was putting up a fight about it. Um, Wikipedia also said it was a top seller with 50,000 copies of the tape sold. And 50,000 in today's terms is pretty small. Well, I don't think anybody, well, I, never mind. I was going to say, I don't think anybody buys it, but people are definitely using OnlyFans. So, <laughs> um, but I don't know if you get, I don't know if like the content is downloadable. I don't know if like you pay and you can download anything. I'm sure you can like screen. You're record. not allowed to find out. Okay. I wasn't planning on it. I'm just telling you, like, I don't, I don't know. Whether or not I'm right or not, but yeah. Then uh, the next person, so the the fourth comment. Um, do, 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 it just says it's, do, well, I didn't want to read the first part. Uh, folks were going to see an X-rated flick. It's significant since it became part of pop culture. Porno chic. Porno chic. Yeah. 
This sounds like Bujato. Porno chic. Is I mean, one is about people being ghetto but wearing like expensive clothes. I'm saying it's equally dumb. Yeah. I'm not saying that they are synonymous. Maybe they are. No. I'm putting it in the Gemini's here. Okay, Gemini so says. anyways, we were going to talk about hurricane preparedness, and you, you went on your Tangent Express looking up Debbie Das Dallas. Okay, I'm, Gemini's response is really funny. Okay, read it out loud, Andrew. Right. Debbie Does Dallas has been referenced countless times in pop culture. The film's title and the character Debbie have become synonymous with a particular stereotype, and is often used as a, short, as a shorthand for cheerleaders or promiscuity. Um, here are some examples of how the film has been referenced. Film and television has been directly mentioned or parodied in numerous films and television shows, including Family Guy, Friends, The Simpsons, Clueless, and South Park. In music, the film's title has been used, and in song lyrics such as Frank Zappa, is that how you say it? Frank Zappa, Zappa, Z-A-P-P-A, I don't know who that is, so I don't, I don't know. know. Uh, and Snoop Dogg. Uh, advertising has been used in advertisements for products such as beer and clothing. Uh, everyday language, the phrase Debbie Does Dallas, has entered everyday language as often used as a joke or innuendo. The film's enduring popularity and its references in pop culture can be attributed to several factors, including its controversial subject matter, its campy humor, and its iconic imagery. So it sounds like it's a fully scripted cheerleader Porn. But you supposedly don't know because you supposedly have never seen it. I've never watched vintage stuff. I was never interested in it. <laughs> it says, it's important to note that while it is a well-known film, it is also a controversial one. <laughs> Could, couldn't imagine why. So, um, all right, now that Debbie is doing Tallahassee and has moved on from Dallas... Okay. You wanted to talk about the clusterfuck at Costco. You didn't even get gas. What kind of hurricane preparedness person doesn't get gas? Come on. I never said that I was the queen of hurricane preparedness. But that's like the number one thing that people go. Yeah, it's on my list. Fill their gas cans and Mm -hmm. fill their vehicles and everything like that. So at least you Mm -hmm. can sit in your vehicle and not suffer when your power's out. No, the idea is so that you can pack up and leave. Run your generator. So that you can pack up and leave. People that leave, leave in advance. They don't wait until the last minute. Right. But it's filling your car's gas tank so that you can pack up and leave if you need to. I want to know how many people over the years or per year, if there's like an average, Fill their vehicle in gas cans only for their vehicle to be totaled because of the storm. So they just wasted money <laughs> filling the vehicle and all their gas cans get like crushed or whatever when debris falls, hits a wind, kicks it up, whatever. I'm sure it happens in every storm. Yeah, but n- like that's something that I want to know now. That's a useless fact that I want to bring up at like a okay. party. I don't even know how you would research that. Probably based on the amount of people posting about how they filled up their vehicle. All right. It's Andrew just, will give you guys that information on the next episode because he will do all the research. Sure. I'll just do the research right, Andrew? right now. I'll do the research right now. All right. Well, I will let you guys know from the last episode, I transferred $35 per child based on the $140 mm-hmm. amount owed due to laughing. Nobody's... um. Or I haven't checked the comments because I literally just got back from getting my hair cut, but nobody had given us their total yet in the comments. People had commented, mm-hmm. but nobody had given like, no, I think it's this or this. Right. Everybody, the tally was nine everybody, me, everybody just five agreed. him. Everybody just agreed with me. <laughs> which <laughs> which means I'm right. I win the show. Totaled was, $140, which I paid out the $140. He didn't pay out the I just, 50 I just filled up your gas tank, so we'll call it even. It was more expensive than 50. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, continue. No, that, that was it for the follow-up from oh. last 
from last week, but I wanted everybody to know that the children are no longer poor and they have $35 to their names. <laughs> I wonder, I've never looked further in our analytics than like mm-hmm. the country that people are from that watch us. Okay. I wonder if it'll give us a breakdown to like state and like city or region or stuff. So if anybody's in Florida and currently about to get hit. No, 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 no. Just in general, like how many people listening are actually in hurricane territory mm. that this would even apply to to begin with. Like, we, So you're from the Midwest, Andrew. Yeah. Have you ed- ever experienced a hurricane prior to moving here in what, 2017? Yeah, several. I'd been here on vacation. And you'd experienced hurricanes on vacation? Yeah. Okay. What What do you remember um, as a vacationer here? Just Benny, my grandpa, mm-hmm. um, boarding up and us having to go out and help him and Reggie and pull out the boats and cause they were right on the intercoastal. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it. I just remember and now it was just a thunderstorm to me at that point. Right. And now as a resident of a place that experiences hurricanes mm-hmm. and tropical storms on the annual basis. Mm-hmm. Did we get any at all last year? I feel like we didn't. Yeah, we did. I thought we Tropi- only got hit by tro- a depression. Tropical storm. Yeah. Weak, glorified thunderstorm. Yeah, no, that's that's how I feel with 99% of the ones that roll through here. Well, it's only when you actually get hit by the eye wall or it stagnates and sits on top of you and dumps mm-hmm. tens of feet of water. Which is why I was the outlier at Costco today, buying just normal groceries because it was a normal Were people Monday buying, for me. Do people have generators in their carts? I did not see that, but Costco had redesigned their layout to accommodate everybody there for milk and bread like, and literally rolled out the bread to like the middle, which it's normally on a back wall. No, every Pretty much every Costco that you'll go to, it's on a back wall hidden away somewhere. Now they had literally rolled out the bread to the middle aisle so that way you could grab it as you were walking to checkout. Did you know that um, they're like the – psychology behind the layout is meant to make you feel like a better person. So like you walk past the expensive TVs and the jewelry and you're like, I just saved money because I didn't buy a new shiny. And then now because subconsciously you're like, I just saved myself $4,000 by buying, not buying something. And I'm only here for the $5 chicken. But like they, they were never there to buy a TV. They didn't save Mm -hmm. money, but subliminally, it, they make feel like you saved money so that you spend more money. I believe it. That's the entire premise behind their And so like regular grocery stores, mm-hmm. the reason that they jumble up their aisles all the time is to trick people that are creatures of habit into buying things that they don't actually need. Whoops. Went down the aisle that used to be pasta and now it's. Yeah. Gummy bears and beef <laughs> okay. Jerky. Since I'm right here, I guess I'll get yeah, it. Yeah. Interesting. No, I didn't know that. That's like, well the the Lowe's Foods and Monkey Junction mm-hmm. is like the most annoying one for having to walk in and trying to get anywhere, like directly walk somewhere. Mm-hmm. Unless you're there to buy fresh fruit and flowers, you have to like zigzag through stuff. The grocery store in my hometown. I I feel like that at all Lowe's Foods. I hate all Lowe's Foods. The grocery store in my hometown, I don't know if you remember the the layout, but you walk in the front door, which is, if you're facing the building, it's all the way on the left. You walk in, and then it's all the registers right there, and you're funneled to go all the way to the other end of the store, and you have to go right and zigzag your way through all the produce. Then you end up by the butcher area, and then you can go down your normal aisles. So they literally have created a funnel of bullshit. They put you, they put you right through there. We're all like funnel of bullshit. You go by the customer service, you got the florist, you got, you know, the first thing. It actually sounds like the Publix layout here. Before, no, because you can walk right in the front door of Publix. There you can't. You, you have to walk in. You can't go through backwards through the registers. You have to go all the way around the store to come back around. So, and the first thing before you can make your first left turn, so you've got all of their um, 
the like deli and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And then there's like a area that's actually a two story area lounge area where you can sit and there's TVs and stuff. And the Starbucks is right there. So before you ever make the first turn, you're walking towards the Starbucks the entire time. It's not like here where you walk past the Starbucks and it's like behind you and you see it on your way out. It's literally you're walking towards it while you're thinking about how you're going to go and try and save money. Okay. Anyways. Anyways. Next time. Yet another another tangent. It wasn't a tangent. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about layouts and stuff for hurricanes. No. You said that they redesigned. We were were talking about hurricanes. You went on the tangent regarding layouts and Did the pricing change at all? But everybody was there getting their milk, getting their bread, and getting their bottled water. Do you want to know what the next um, thing coming for pricing for stores, especially like that? They've been testing it around the country in in various different ways. They're moving to like more like Uber, where it's Mm going to be like surge pricing, demand-based pricing. Yeah. The fuck not! And... It'll be based on you and your rewards account. Well, they can fuck right off on that one. So when you walk up, because they have they have the ability to uh, track your device throughout the store. So they're they're wanting to change to um, digital displays for pricing. So when Nona walks up to milk, they'll display one price, and then when Andrew, who never buys milk, walks up, sees a different price. That's crazy. That's what everything is going towards. That's they already do it with airline bonkers. pricing and everything else like that. Bonkers. It's it's the next way for industries to continue milking the cow. But that's that's exa- I mean, if line doesn't go up in corporate, not even just corporate America, any organization, they're going to find ways to either cut corners or milk you for every last dime. That's why the whole bait and switch with subscription pricing. Oh, you got in cheap at five ninety nine, but now we're going to go up to seven ninety nine, And then you just stay when probably originally, if the price had been seven ninety nine, you probably would have been like, I don't really need that over $2 a month. Like, was that like seven cents a day? People will look at that and be like, oh, I just, well, if I just don't buy my Red Bull or my coffee, I can afford it. And that's not going to happen around here. I'm buying my Red Bull and she's buying her coffee. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, we can go back to talking about hurricanes now. (laughs) I don't know. I, I got, I was like the only one getting normal groceries. Everybody else was there. Which? With the intent. When you came back, which way did you come in? Did you come in over off of uh, St. Andrews or from the other? Stop telling people where we fucking live. You know where we live. You just described the location. We've already said we've already said multiple times the the area. Okay, but I definitely do not tell people roads to narrow it down. Anyways. No, I did not come from that road that you just mentioned. So when I pulled in from that road, there was an H-frame sign, those little like political signs. Mm -hmm. But it was like a storm cloud with lightning going across it. And it said, windinhale.com. I saw that yesterday, I think, or two days ago. It was two two days ago. It was when we were coming back from high school orientation. And I was thinking about printing some stuff off and just using theirs and just putting your insurance stuff on top. Speaking of, all the carriers are shut down because of the storm. Yeah, the moratorium is in effect. It went in effect on the 3rd. So literally cannot do work this week. Well, they're they're saying that the storm is going to go back out over the Atlantic and then, might and then come back. turn. No, it is going to come back in. Might because there's no guarantees. It's going to come. There's back no in. guarantees in anything in, in life, it's gonna especially not pertaining to a hurricane. It's going to come back in. I had already imagined this storm, but they're saying the, down in Florida right now, they're saying it's similar to Florence of moving slow and just dumping rain. Cause that's where my it's, boss is. She's down in Florida and she literally quickly. just dropped her two oldest kids off at camp yesterday. And you know what they're going to do at camp this week? Hurricane preparedness. It's free labor. 
<laughs> the kids are going to be helping the camp shut down for it's, the hurricane. It's moving at seven miles an hour, which is pretty fast for a hurricane. It's supposed to be slowing way down. That's at least what she it's, said when I talked to her this morning. The eye is already almost back to the Atlantic. Interesting. So maybe she's just, or they're equating the amount of rain. But maybe. The eye I don't is know. Because they were here for Florence. So the eye is moving fast. Interesting. And the eye is what is the storm is tracked. Around. I was literally just going off of what she said this morning. And anyways, so yeah, it's, but yeah. it's, it made landfall, I believe late last night or early this morning or something like that. And it's already, it's crossed over into Georgia and it's a tropical storm now. And it's almost back to the Atlantic. So it'll be in the Atlantic probably. What did it say? Um, static images. Do you think it's going to be here before my birthday? No, it's supposed to get here on your birthday. That's what I said. It's saying Friday, 8 a.m. It's going to be basically on the state line of North and South Carolina. And then birthday linger, hurricane. linger around on Saturday as a tropical storm and or depression, depending on where you're looking on the map. And in my 35 years... Of living here in Wilmington, North Carolina, this will be officially a first. Well, I have never had a hurricane or tropical storm on my birthday. Neither have I. <laughs> He's got a December twenty fourth birthday, guys. Yeah. So There's never been a hurricane on my birthday. I've had hurricanes the week of. I've had hurricanes the week after. I have never had a hurricane on my birthday. And it's gonna fuck our plans, probably. Probably those plans that he let everybody know in the last episode and how see, you guys you, were all going to stalk us. You're not, see, you're not superstitious, but I told you when I say things, it makes things change. That's why when my team is losing, I make a big deal about it. And I'm like, they I fucking don't know, suck. Guys, what blah, do you blah, think? Blah. Yeah. So when my team is losing, I make a big deal about it. I'm like, they suck. They're trash. It's the worst team ever. They shouldn't have even played today. And then, boom, they win. I don't know. So I made this storm come for you. Oh, my fucking God. You think very highly of yourself. The world revolves around Andrew. Clearly. It does. Clearly. It does. It does. It has nothing to do with, you know... The hot and cold air mixing together, creating. I'm going to make some people mad. But just like Deadpool said, he's Marvel Jesus. I'm real world Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not watching, if you're listening, you should see her face. Just go to this exact moment. Um, well, when we had the intro, that had some time. But go around the 22, 30-ish mark, 23-minute mark. And you can see oh, yeah. Face. Would you like to introduce us since that didn't happen? Nah. Okay. I'm Andrew. This is Nona. We're now close to concluding the episode. Um, check the links in the description and check the links and information in the pin post. If you guys didn't see, we finally, well, I, I, actually, we launched the shirt. We just never taught, told anybody about it. Oh, okay. It's so been, tell everybody how they can order it. It's It'll be in the description. I'm not going to waste air time talking about it. We got to go back to talking about hurricanes and stuff. Okay. Um, so, yeah. I so, wore yeah. it. I wore it in the previous two episodes. Mm -hmm. And, guys, he did not shower between it, and he did not wash it oh, between whatever. it. That was literally him wearing it for three days in a row. Mm-hmm. She's full of shit. No, I'm not. Yeah, she is. Disgusting. Disgusting. She's full of shit. So anyways, back to hurricanes. Yep. There's also another uh, storm. Her well, has 40% chance to develop. It's out just north of what, Columbia, whatever. Oh, yeah. It says 80% uh, chance of forming in the next 48 hours. Yay. Yep. I'm so excited. So it's getting ready. The season. Wait, hold on. So Andrew, what is your number one hurricane tip for everybody listening or watching? Um, Stay for your first one. If you don't have like. No, go to the ABC store. No. Is what you no, were no, supposed no, no, to no, say. No, 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 no. I'm getting to that. <laughs> stay 
if you've never experienced one, especially if it looks like the eye is going to come near you. If you don't have like a lot of family that live with you, like I didn't, when I stayed for Florence, I didn't have a family. I had my dog and me. So I didn't like have any worry. I could leave and I could just like jump in the car and take off if I needed to, if there was evacuation order or anything like that, but stay because it is a fucking experience. It is very fun to be the one posting and sending videos to social media. And if you go dark, if you stop posting, everybody assumes you're dead. You, no, no, no. You become like the most popular person in your circle. Because everybody's like, have you heard from him? Have you, he hasn't posted. It's like, oh my God, I tried texting him and didn't, bitch, I was sleeping. <laughs> sure. No, so um, the cell towers and everything were down uh, for a couple of days. And I went to the Lowe's Foods in Leland where we used to live. And when I pulled in the parking lot, my phone showed that there was an open public or guest Wi Fi network from the grocery store. The store was closed. They didn't have power, but their generators were still running their network for all their security stuff. And so I just pulled in the parking lot, connected to the guest Wi-Fi, <laughs> turned on my VPN, and I like sit there, reply to everybody, make my calls, everything like that. And then I would go back. So there'd be like big windows of time where I wasn't sitting in the parking lot. I just went to my friend's house and sat outside and drank and watched people pick up bits and pieces of their houses. Did you have any door, any damage for yeah, the previous owner? I hadn't been up on the roof yet. I just bought that house mm -hmm. three months prior. Mm -hmm. um, they had satellite mm -hmm. TV and I had not gone up and taken the dish down. So it had like ripped the arm on the dish and it was dangling from the uh, coax cable. So then why did you wait three more years to finally climb up there and take it down? I left the bracket up there because I didn't want to mess with the roof. I figured the, because the when they put the bracket up, they caulk and seal around there. And I knew that there wasn't water in the attic. Mm -hmm. There was no reason for me to introduce it. And my assumption was if I had the luck to get hit with a category three, four storm, Three months into owning my house, I was probably going to be getting a roof soon. And then it just never happened because we never had gotcha. another big storm. So, yeah. For Florence, I packed up the kids and I drove 12 hours to Destin, Florida with four kids in the car and had a fucking blast. Just went farther south into hurricane country. And <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it wasn't going anywhere into the Gulf and... I knew that they weren't going to have school for an entire week. Mm -hmm. I had a strong feeling that we were going to finally actually lose power, even though we were on a priority power grid in the neighborhood. So how many, um, we were not on priority. Yeah, we were because of the nursing home across the street. Yes. We were on a priority power grid well, because the nursing home had to stay up in Reading. Well, it took them four days. Right. And, and that Brunswick, was with, that was with being on a priority. But, but Brunswick forest had power two days prior. I cannot answer that. All I know is we what priority. They, they can say literally, they can <laughs> say whatever they want, but we weren't the priority on a piece of paper versus what they actually did. Two completely different things. The, um, the, uh, distribution thing that they needed to get to was underwater. There's nothing they could do about that. There's no priority. Let's go, suction water out of a um, high voltage area and kill everyone. Right. I understand that. But I'm just saying that I made the decision knowing that even though we were on a priority grid, we were likely going to lose power and there was no need for me to stay with the children. You just said we were on priority and you knew that we were going to lose power. That doesn't make sense. If you think you are a priority, you would think that you're not going to lose power. No. Because you are the priority to maintain service, not just to restore service. Restoring service is more difficult than maintaining service, depending on what the problem is. Because the, the grid itself doesn't go down. Your connection to the grid is what goes down. Okay. And all of our utilities being underground. Yeah. Other than the main... Uh, uh, three phase lines that like run 
along the highway and then the high tension stuff and everything like that. Like that's a whole different story, but we actually don't connect to that or we didn't connect to that. That's distribution for farther in the state. Okay. Yeah. When you, when you say we're priority, priority means keeping it up, not letting it go down and then restoring it. I don't believe for a minute that BEMC for one, they're not even the power provider. They're subletting from Duke. Right. And it so, was a, it was a Duke, um, lineman who lived on my street who I had a Duke lineman that lived across the street from me. Okay. Who was the one who told me that our neighborhood was sounds like he's full of shit. It's exactly what it sounds like. He just was like, Oh, I work there. Hot girl. Talk to me. I'm going to tell her to stay. It's exactly what it sounds it, like. It was not even pertaining to Florence. Just in general, like for any hurricane. Get you to stay. There's no power. I could sneak in the house. They know. Yeah. You're way too like um, naive and optimistic about other people's intentions. We got to think the worst in these people. I don't know. The things that have been coming out of your mouth, and now I'm thinking the worst of you. No. Yeah? I'm, no, I just know that these people are terrible, and I'm stating the facts for the people that are like, oh, my neighbor's really nice. And then they're like, you know, it was kind of weird the way that you said that. Maybe I shouldn't stay. There's actually, like, there's four storms in the Pacific right now. It's going to be a busy season. I wonder how many they, because theirs don't usually make landfall unless they make landfall in Asia. And it's what, a typhoon there? Um, Hold on. It's based on whether or not you're north or south of the equator. And it's also based on where it formed. So these are all right now, these are all considered tropical storms. But so they there's cyclone. Hurricane, typhoon, and I believe there was another one. Okay. So a cyclone is a hurricane, but a cyclone is also the broad term for all of them. Okay. It's like calling a, every car a car. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Continue. Give them, give them a, a, a word of advice, and I will look this up. Word of advice. From your insurance um, person. Oh, well, I was just going to say for somebody who's born and raised here, you always fill your tub with water. That way, if you need water for anything, not to drink. But we're on. Okay, sure, sure, whatever. Because you can't trust what comes out of the top after a storm. You can filter it yourself. You can. I wouldn't trust stagnant water in a bathtub. It's what has always been taught. Okay. I, I, you would still need to boil that. Like there, You're going to use the same precautions for both. So it just doesn't make... And it's primarily... I don't know anybody that has a well. I don't know where in this area anybody has a well. Do you know? There's a few... There's a few that aren't connected to city. But very, very few. Mm -hmm. I remember um, this neighborhood over here, Silver Lake, mm -hmm. when I lived over there before I bought my house, they were forced to connect to public utility. And they had to pay for it. It's crazy. Yeah. They had to pay for um, the people to come in, dig up, and connect like the last... X amount from the actual... Now search the water in the tub. I'm questioning my whole life right now. All because what Andrew decided that it sounds wrong. Ten things you should do to... No, I specifically said the water in I the I want to see if it comes up on the list. Just relax. <sighs> relax. Number one, develop an emergency plan. Cool. <laughs> Assemble disaster supply kit. Cool. Secure your home. Cool. Review insurance policies. Came cool. up number four. Visit nonaphelps.com if you need a review. Link in the description. I cannot review your current policies. I'm happy to change you after the moratorium 
is lifted. Fill your car's gas tank comes in at number five. Mm. Get cash comes in at number six. Okay. Charge electronic devices, seven. Uh, gather important documents is number eight. Know your local shelter is number nine. Stay informed is number 10. No flashlights or anything like that on the list or candles or that, anything? It was included in the charge electronics. Gotcha. It was like, that's the, the um, heading was charge electronics. They had like a whole pallet of lanterns, blah, blah, blah. like these camping lanterns at Costco that were right next to the bread. It was bread and camping lanterns they had put together in the middle of the aisle. For water, uh, you should follow these recommendations before the hurricane. Stockpile water, fill containers. If you have extra containers, clean plastic jugs, bottles, etc. Fill them with water. Store them in a cool, dark place. Number three, fill bathtub. As a last resort, fill your bathtub with water. This water can be used for cleaning and flushing toilets if you uh, if your regular water supply is disrupted. Again, if- I said not to drink. If the water supply is disrupted, use bottled water, boil water, disinfect water with bleach. Don't forget your pets. Melt ice. Yeah, you were water. literally making me question my whole entire life because that is something that I've always done. That was last on the list, though. It said stockpile water, fill containers, and then as a last right. resort. Oh, it, it, it's always in addition to in my world. It's you get water you, and then you store is it and illegal to collect rainwater in North Carolina? Do you know? I'm not going to comment on that. Why? <laughs> we don't collect rainwater. Um, well, I had a rain barrel at my last house. My parents have a rain barrel. And I don't know. I've It's attached to the bottom of the fucking gutter spout. Like, it, it. So some areas, like where they have... Uh, water supply that has to literally come in from Vegas, for example, right? Okay. Um, places like that, it is illegal because they want the earth and like their lakes and stuff like that to recapture all possible water. Okay. But I don't like it's, it didn't seem like there was any rhyme or reason. Like it didn't really seem like it was a Democrat versus Republican controlled state thing. Okay. It just seemed like one state was like, Oh, it affects the ecosystem. The other state, it's like, uh, oh, freedom. Okay. So, I'm going to ask, is it... Also, we don't live in the desert, so it's... doesn't matter. They There's conservative or con- conservationist type people that will tell you the same thing with, like, cutting down certain trees or, like, going in the swamp and, like, the marshlands. and Like, they will find a reason. Like, the rainwater yeah. coming off your roof directly impacts that tadpole over there. And I think I'm going to have to pause this yeah, real quick. Yeah, your UPS. <laughs> I, I don't have anything coming from UPS. One second. Be right back. We're back. Sorry about that. UPS delivered the box, <laughs> which means the dogs the do- go bonkers. The dog alarm has to go off mm-hmm. every time. Um, so I pulled it up before yeah. I hit resume. Okay. I looked at the screen to make sure I did hit resume. Okay. Um, <laughs> says, no, it's not illegal to collect rainwater in North Carolina. In fact, the state encourages rainwater harvesting as a way to conserve water. Okay. So like I said, every state is different. has like a different philosophy. Um, What's your philosophy, Andrew? If it touches apparently my, it's the world according to Andrew. If it touches my property, it's mine. Okay, cool. Um, so Which, speaking of property, okay. um, what do you suggest for property owners to be prepared for the storm coming? Um, guns and ammo. Okay, besides guns and ammo visit, and alcohol. Visit your local, yeah, local, local liquor store. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, have your tank filled, flashlights. Mm-hmm. If um, so, you can get UPCs, uh, un- uninterrupted battery backups, whatever you want to call it, power um, banks, whatever you want to call them. Power. So, like people call them power strips, power banks, battery backup, whatever. Like we have one, two, three, four, five. Six. We have six, seven. We have seven of them. So we have the ability if we turn At off. $50 a piece? They range like vastly depending on the ones that are. I didn't know you spent that much money. These ones are more, that one back there and the one down there are more expensive than that. But they have higher capacity and runtime and better. Uh, uh, it's called current. Um, 
attenuation, basically. That's not the term, but it basically smooths out the power that goes to your devices. That way, there's no like big spikes or anything like that that could damage your device. That's the biggest selling point of those things. Plus, they're typically like insured for X amount of money. So if your device is connected to it and your shit catches on fire because of a lightning storm, usually you can get that company to pay for your devices. I don't know how difficult it is. I mean, my client right across the road, they just had to replace a bunch of CNC machines or like the actual main boards, the computers that run the machines from Storm that we had a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. and their uh, laser etcher. So, yeah, it's taking a long time to get the parts, but at least he's getting the parts. ETA? Uh, well, for the laser, it's August 13th. So, so I'll get my cups done after that. Yep. Yep. Cool. And then you guys won't have to see Nona. You'll see nonaphelps.com. <laughs> sure. So, yeah, that's, I mean, whatever you need to, I mean, make sure you have dog food. I think that should be a priority. Mm-hmm. Make if sure all, your animals are satisfied. Yeah. If you're like, oh, I'm going to go store in like two days. The storm won't be bad. And then your dog runs out of food. Now you're going through your refrigerator with your dog. Or dogs, plural. Yeah. We have three. Yeah. And they will happily eat more of your human food. Than their oh, kibble. yeah. And then they'll shit all over your floor, and then you get to smell it. Well, speaking from experience, huh? Mmm. Yay. So. One suggestion that I have for homeowners who have trampolines, though. Please, please, please prepare them for the hurricane, because every single year, without fail... Somebody does not and then just flies on over the fence to the neighbor's house, crashing into the neighbor's house. Oh, I didn't know. It's literally like a giant kite. So guys, please, please secure your trampolines. However, that may, when I had a trampoline a few years ago, I ratchet strapped to the fence. On, I put it in the corner and ratchet the, strapped the all the way. The fence is no better because the fence can get ripped down. I'm just saying, do something. Do something. Just take it apart. Take it down if you need to, but do something. Do not just hope my, for the best. Use my preferred strategy of cutting holes. Cutting in holes it. and destroying your trampoline. Yeah. Your, your uh, insurance will appreciate that because pretty much no homeowner's insurance in the state of North Carolina wants to cover trampolines. For this exact reason. So I was like skimming over this Mm -hmm. because I I saw a word that caught my eye and it made me want to read it more while you were talking. So it says rainwater can be used for non-potable purposes, which is anything other than like drinking, cooking, whatever. Right. Um, I used it to water my garden. But if you want to use it for any potable purposes, even as a private resident, not even for your business, that requires permitting okay so if you wanted to collect rainwater to filter it to drink it Mm, okay well that's that's too much yeah that's too much the barrel is for the plants yes officer it's for the plants it's for the plants all right well anything else no that's it be safe everybody oh uh the point of this episode is that if we don't have a thursday episode it's because we're without power. It's because we didn't record and didn't get it edited. Yeah. I mean, that thing will run my computer and networking equipment for about an hour, but that's not long enough to right. export a video. So um, that's it. We are not going to do anything. We're going to stay here. Yeah. We've, we have too many dogs to try and go anywhere. Mm, sure. Bye. Goodbye. If I can, there, mouse. <laughs>